there is more. There is also the story of the value of the dollar, which may decrease. How does this happen? Why does the value of the dollar decrease and increase? That is the story of comparative prices. Prices change. Demand and supply, government controls, subsidies, many things affect prices. We're talking about general price levels. As the general price level goes up, the value of the dollar goes down. As the general price level goes down, the value of the dollar goes up. Additional credit available for many purposes for a family to build a new home, for a merchant to enlarge and remodel his store, for a farmer to purchase new equipment, for a manufacturer to meet his payroll during slack selling periods, for a family to meet the cost of an expensive illness, and for many other good reasons why people are always needing more money, more credit, than they have immediately available. Since most of these transactions involve the transfer of credit rather than cash, they increase the bank's deposits much more than they decrease its cash. Consequently, the bank needs to keep comparatively little cash on hand. By proper timing, new loans are made at about the same rate that old ones are repaid. Still, for all the work this credit has done, it has had little effect on the bank's cash. What then does the bank do with the rest of the cash the depositors have left with it? Some of it is put to work for the federal government, and in exchange for it, the bank holds bonds and other government obligations. Some of it is put to work for the community in which the bank is located, in exchange for municipal bonds and securities. Much of it goes to build up the industrial might of the nation, in exchange for corporate securities. And finally, some of the cash goes into Federal Reserve bank stock. Our Federal Reserve system serves as a banker's bank facilitating the transfer of credit among member banks throughout the nation in the same way that each bank helps. Capitalism? Well, why should there be any question about it? Hasn't it given us the highest standard of living in the world? We don't have free enterprise. Just bureaucratic red tape. The government ought to keep it there. What does that mean? Well, we could point to certain fundamental ideas which we say are part of a capitalistic system. For example, private property. Individuals or corporations may own land, natural resources, buildings of all kinds, machinery and equipment for the production of goods, facilities for the transportation of goods, and the goods themselves. In a capitalistic system, these are usually private property. And the fundamental of capitalism is the profit motive. For the sake of profit, we cultivate the land. We build great factories to produce goods. We sell for profit. The goods thus produced we transport over large distances, still for the sake of profit. Those who have savings often invest or lend them, hoping for a share of profit. And in so doing, help to build the industrial might of the nation. Some other ideas are basic to capitalism. Competition. Freedom of contract. Free enterprise. What do they mean? Could these rights exist without law that divides? 